Welcome to the Mud Shop. This is Diana's Mud Shop. Today I thought we would look at uh, how I made these garden bells. Now this is a, it's almost bone dry, but not quite yet. Um, but this is what we're gonna try to do today. This is where I did the top. I have a loop on the inside to hook your string to and all the little wind catchers and stuff. This will be first inside. Is a this will be the wind catcher. And I do have holes all around it uh, to hang your little chimes from. But uh, let's get started. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to use Debbie De La Cruz's um, clay cutters. This is for the cup. The measurements of this is 12 and a half inches by four inches. And the, the circle, I think, is like three and a quarter inch. It's, it's in between three and three and a half somewhere along in there. may not be exact three and a quarter, but it's close enough to it. But it comes in a set. And the reason I chose to do this is because then I can make several of them and they'll be consistent in their size. Okay, first thing I did, I've rolled out my clay on my slab roller. I've got my rib, a sponge to keep, oh, I have my clay cutter. Uh, my texture tools, a hole punch you will need. Uh, I did get out a small pot or some. You might not need that, but I always keep one on hand just in case. And uh, today for the wind catchers, I'm gonna try to make two of these. Um, I may not make but just one on camera, but I'm gonna do butterflies for one of them. Uh, this will be the butterfly inside the cutter on the inside, uh, and then this will be the wind catcher. And then I want to make birds hanging from one. So I have the bigger bird cutter that'll go for the wind catcher, and this will be the uh, clanker, I guess, your clapper, you call it. So I've got all this laid out. Now, as for texture, one of them I want to do with no texture and just let uh, do the glaze and layer glaze on it. The other one, I've got a, a MKM uh, roller you can put whatever texture you want. You can do stamps. You can do uh, rolling pins, however you want to do it. You can even draw and sketch on it, um, uh, carve into it, or leave it plain like one I'm going to do. All right, once you've got your clay rolled out, now I do roll all my clay to uh, four-eighths, no, three-eighths of an inch, which is just a little bit under half an inch, which makes a good, sturdy bell. You see us. You don't want real thin for it to hang outside and the pieces be clanking together. So the thicker the better, but you don't want it too thick that it's gonna be heavy. So um, I've wet my rib. I'm going to go ahead and compress my clay. Um, one thing, a lot of people don't like the canvas texture on it, but it actually, lets you know where you have compressed and where you haven't because if you still see the canvas texture you haven't compressed there so it, it does help all right now that i've got this side notice i went two different directions across it all right now i'm going to flip it over carefully and i'm going to compress it on this side caught a pocket of air up under here. All right, now, now I want to cut two of these. So I'm gonna lay my cutters where I want the texture to go. Let me get a board. I keep all my wear boards right under here. All right, because as I cut them out, I'm gonna place them on my board. The first one I'm just gonna cut without any texture. I'll drop that on it, put a little mark. Let me smooth that back out. Since I'm not doing texture, any little mark will show. And just press down 
Make sure it's cut real well all the way through. All right. Got this. And I'll also, let's see. Now this clay is really wet. I'm gonna lay this out. And cut my circle. You only need one circle. Now, if you were making a cup or a mug, you would do the same thing. You cut out the bottom, but in this case, it's going to be the top. All right, place this here. All right, now, make sure this is released. I'm going to lay this next one out. Let me get a release cut from this. I will wedge this clay back up. I have heat on in here today, so I don't want the clay to dry out. So I'll go ahead and kind of wedge it a little bit and place it under my sponge. That'll keep it damp. All right, now for my texture, I want to lay this out where I'm going to need the texture and I'm barely moving it across, oh, just marking where it's gonna be. I see the mark there. I'm going to going to take now I know that the wide end is the bottom so I'm making sure that my flowers are going to face that way and I'm going to just roll this into the clay to get the texture okay and I also want it on the bottom because as I said the bottom is going to be the top, so I'm gonna make sure I have some texture there enough to cut this piece out. All right, now I'm gonna line this up right where I want it and press it in all the way this time where it cuts the clay. And you may wonder where I get these cutters. So most of you probably already know, but these come from DeLaDesignGifts.com. And she custom makes a lot of clay texture pieces. Oh. And cutters, rollers, all kind of things. Check her side out. Okay. I'm gently gonna lift this up. Now I just rolled this clay out. So it is very, very wet. there. Okay, here are my pieces. Okay. Now, while they're sitting up, actually, I might have enough to do a third one. Why, yes, I will. So, I want a different design, and since I'm going to do birds on one, I'm thinking... The Scandy Birds would be perfect. Let's see, you've got this one. Yeah. All right, this texture has birds on it. So I think I'm gonna use it. So I know I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna put this. Okay, tap it in. I've got, gotten out of the view of the camera. Sorry, let's see. Light it this way, so. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around this way and roll in my texture. Okay. Put this away. Yeah, I'm trying to put it back. All right, I'm gonna loosen it from the mat and cut this one out. Big side is the top. Big side's the bottom. Okay, it goes this way. Okay. Here's 
this up. And cut the bottom of it. All right, now I have all my pieces cut out. I'm gonna roll up all the rest of my scraps. And boy, is this clay wet. All right, what I'm gonna do is, since I've got such a big lump of clay left over, it'll be wedged and rolled back out. I'm going to put this in some plastic, wrap it up where it doesn't dry out. Let me grab some. All right, plastic could be garbage bags. It could be um, bags from the dry cleaners, just uh, Ziploc bags, whatever. They all work, they just wanna get keep the air off of it to keep it from drying out. All right, so that's over to the side. Make sure that my mat now is clean. It's ready to work. Now I will need some of that clay that I just bagged up here in a minute to roll coils uh, to make the insides and the connecting pieces. And I guess I, hmm, I am gonna have to do this. Okay. Not thinking well. I need my clapper and my wind catcher and my charms that I'm gonna have from it. So, wedge this clay back. so I can get to my rolling pin. I don't roll everything on the slab roller. Some of it I do this way. Now, if you want to put your piece back on your slab roller, that's perfectly all right to do so. And since I do have such a large piece, I probably should have done that. But I think we're going to be just fine. It's still a little bit thick. For these pieces that I want. Okay, now, loosen this up from my mat and compress. Make sure there are no air bubbles in it since this is reclaimed. When I hand build, I started out with about five and a half pounds of clay and you saw I cut out three of these, getting ready to cut out the uh, little attachment pieces that'll go with them. But when I hand build, I'll cut out something and I'll make, make it and I'll wedge it up, roll it out again, make something until I've got just one little bit of clay left. And depending on what time of year it is, if it's springtime or getting close to spring, I might make a garden worm. If it's Christmas time, I might make a candy cane or a little ornament or something out of what's left. Uh, if it's summertime, I'll make a spoon. Somebody can stir their lemonade with. Okay, now, I want a little bit of this with the flower texture to match the ones that I did with the flowers. And I think that's going to be my butterflies. So, I'm going to cut out one large butterfly 
Bring it on my board. And the small butterfly. And I really think around the sides of it, it would look cute to have butterflies everywhere. So, let me get the butterflies cut. Let me get another board. I know I put five holes around the sides of the of the wind chime, and I have one on the inside to be a clapper, so that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and sometimes something happens to them, so I'm gonna make an extra one. I would hate to be at the stage where it's all fired and ready to put together and be missing one little butterfly. So I do a couple extra. Let's do one more right here. Okay. All right, that's the attachments for the butterfly. Cut off my little scraps. You can leave them till you're done, but the longer you leave them, the more dry out it gets, so harder to work with when your clay gets dry. Okay, letting that put the sponge on top. Now, let's see, I had one with the birds I wanted. I did, I did the Scandi bird texture. So let's see. Right. So let's see. This one here. And that's the large candy bird. Loosen this up some. I'm not going to use that one. Try again. Here's a bird. All right. And I need two small birds. All right. So we need five around it. One. Two. Three. Four. and at least two extras, just in case. Let's see. And the extra one that I made is just kind of a neutral. Let me get these birds up. with no texture on it. Okay, so we've got, let's see, what shape do I want? If it's no texture on it, but it is springtime, I have chickens and crosses. I'm looking at my cookie cutters on the wall. I have bunny rabbits and all kinds of Christmas stuff over there. I don't want Christmas. Um, let me just get these little Fancy, what I call cloud shapes. These will work fine. I know I want a bigger one for the wind catcher. And I want the little ones that are going around it, the little chimes and the uh, clapper, the small ones. These are pretty big. Hmm, this might not work too well. We'll try it. Okay, here's the, the clapper and then the charms. Actually, could carve something on these. That would look real nice. Two, three. Four. Move 
losing room on my board. Five, that's what I need. Make sure I have extra or two just in case. Okay. All right, and so I'll let these set and then I'll clean these up and put holes in them. Butterflies, the birds, and the neutral ones, the cloud shapes. Okay, put these over here and wedge my clay back up. The next pieces I need are the strips for the top, coils for underneath. Wedge this real well. Clean this up. I normally don't do pottery with long sleeves on, but it's a little cool in here when I got here this morning, so it is what it is. All right, so there's two ways that you can do the strip for the top. You can either uh, roll it out just a little bit, flatten, and, uh, well, there's more than two ways, and cut a strip, or you can pull a handle and cut off the piece or you can make a coil and flatten it. And I think since I've got to do coils anyway, that's that's what the route we're gonna go here. All right, I'm gonna cut off just a little piece because I don't need a whole lot. This doesn't need to be that big. Wet this, all right. Get this, clean this board up. All right. Now, if I'm doing the top strip first, it'll need to be a little bit bigger coil, probably about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, before I flatten it. Cut this in half. I'll use that in a minute. All right, rolling my coil. Now, uh, rolling a coil is something I had to work on. Uh, finally learned that you're rolling, going out, just lightly pulling it back. Roll, light, light pressure. Each time as you're as it's pushing away from you, you're putting a little bit of pressure. Not too much pressure or you'll flatten it out. Okay, let's see. I'm getting a long coil here. You cut it in half again. Okay, that looks about right. Now I'm going to use my pony roller. Of course, you can make your piece however you want. You can cut it with a strip, uh, lay on your, your clay, roll it out and lay on your clay and cut your strip. Or like I said, you can pull a handle. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, this is Laguna B Mix clay. Uh, most of the time I use standard brand, but I did get the opportunity to get some B Mix, and since I'm out of the standard and don't wanna make a five hour drive to go pick up clay, I'm using Laguna. And this will fire to cone five. All right, so I've got my strip. I'm gonna lay it aside so it can stiffen up a little bit. I'm gonna work on this next one. You know, I have to have three. That's, the first one's a little longer than what I need, but I'm not sure if it's enough for two. Hold on, we'll see. All right, I'm gonna flatten this. All right. Clean it up. All right, work 
on this one. About half of this. Now these will be the handles for the top. I made these last year, tried out this, this idea, and it worked well. Gives you something really sturdy to hang your wind chime on. And you can put as many chimes around it as you want. Flatten it. Clean it up. Okay. Now I'm thinking this was about, I really didn't measure. I'm just gonna cut the bad ends off there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the ends off of these too so I can re-wedge that and it won't be drying out. So that's about seven, eight inches. Here, I'll measure it. Let's see. Eight inches. Okay, so you won't use all of that, but it's, you'll use close to it. All right, now to take a little bit and I'm just gonna make a, a coil. This time we're gonna keep the coil round Now this is the coil that's gonna go for the center part inside um, so you have something to tie your clappers onto and your wind catcher onto. All right, now this is probably about half inch. Yeah. Close to half inch, not quite, you see. And I'm going to go ahead and bend it while it is soft. See, I'm bending it like this. I kind of mash it together a little bit. I'll cut off the end. This is what it looks like. Let me show you. Okay. Lay it over here. Pull out my next piece. Remember, I have to have three of each thing. I think this piece is gonna be big enough to do the other two. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. You see? All right, now, since I've used this clay and used it, I'm making sure it's wet before I bend it. All right, bending it around. Mash it together. And cut off the end. Now I'm gonna use my potter's thumb to make sure that it's smooth on the inside, compress so that it doesn't split or crack, and make sure that it is open enough to be able to get your ropes and string inside there. Of course, it's not gonna be easy to get to, so I wanna make it as easy as I can. Clean it up. Okay, and there's your little ring. Again, these will go on the inside. Okay. Let me get this one. Wet it real well. Bend it around. Mash it together. And I did not use any slipping and scoring. The clay is still wet enough that I didn't need to cut off the ends even. And again, this is what it looks like. It's like a little buckle or something that you would use. Okay. Well, now we have all our pieces. I'm gonna show you how to put one together on camera. And then the other two I'll do after I turn the camera off. So, you don't wanna stay with me all day. Let's do the flower one. with the butterflies. 
Okay, get all my pieces here. Okay, all my pieces are laid out and ready. Let me wrap this back up in the plastic because it's going to be a little while now. All this out of the way. Texture rollers, I'm done with them. Put this in my slip. Okay. Now you can work on a banding wheel or just on a wear board, uh, however you want. I'm going to grab a round wear board. And I'm not gonna use my banding wheel today because the camera's sitting on top of it. So anyway, um, yeah. Okay. Now the first piece, while it is continuing to set up, I'm gonna work on this, which is supposed to be the top, the top, okay? And we're going to, the flowers are gonna be on the outside. We're gonna flip it over and work on the inside part first. That's where our hook is going, okay? So we've got one of these ready and I'm gonna tap it, make sure it's good and flat here. I'm going to clean this up around the edges because once I do this, this that's all you can, you can't really handle it too much once this is put on. You can't flip it over and clean the top anymore because until it's put together. All right. Okay. Another piece of sponge on there. These sponges are very cheap, easy to come by, but they do fall apart on you. I will tell you that. Okay, so now I want to slip and score just a little tiny piece in the middle and my serrated rib in my slippy water, which is uh, little dried pieces of clay. And when I clean up and I have moist pieces of clay, all that goes in this little, actually this is a piece I threw five years ago and it's been my favorite little slip bucket ever since. I've got a plastic container that fits over the top perfectly and seals it off, and that's where I keep my slip. But I have slip for the 240 white stoneware, the 112 stoneware, which is a speckled buff clay, and each different kind of clay I have a different slip for. So I don't cross the slip, I, I keep it. And this is the Laguna. All right, so I'm going to score this with my little slippy thing. I'm going to get a little spot right here in the middle. And I'm going to just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle till it, till it takes. Another tool that I'm going to use is a little quarter inch brush. Now this one is my slip brush. I, never, I don't put paint on it or glaze on it anymore. This is just for my slip. I'm going to make sure it's wet cleaned out, tap it on the towel, and just clean around this. See, I'm cleaning around this. And I will tell you, I apologize for the not so good pictures or whatever. Um, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm a potter, and I'd rather spend more time making pots than learning how to edit film, so time it take me to edit this, I could make something else. So that's where my heart is. Just thought I would share some with you. Okay, so now that's what your piece looks like. Okay, almost looks like the bottom of a pacifier, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay, now while this is sitting, I'm gonna leave it alone. We're going to work on this piece. Now, I want to bevel the ends because if you put together these end to end, they're not going to stay real good. So if you bevel them and you overlap them, you have more area to contact and your join will be stronger. So there are several ways to do this. I do have a bevel tool and you just 
bring the wire down on the sides and it's beveled. Or if you don't have a tool, now I'm gonna set it flat on my table here. I'm just gonna use a clay knife. You can use, uh, I got these knives five years ago and they've worked fine for me. I'm not real big on a needle tool. For some reason I always misplace a needle tool, but I always have my knife with me. So I'm gonna hold this knife to about a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna cut along this right along here. And I'm holding my clay steady and I'm gonna lift up and pull this piece out, okay? Now you can drop this down in your slip bucket. Now with, the, with your knife at the same angle, I'm not flipping and turning my piece, I'm holding my knife the same angle, I'm coming over to this side and I'm cutting that same angle straight down. Pull off the extra piece, put it in my slip. All right, so at this point, I'll show it closer to you. So you have this end is beveled, this end is beveled. So when I come together, they will fit perfectly. So now it's time to do that. So we're going to come in I will get a little closer. Well, if I get closer, I gotta get taller. Here we go. This will work. Okay, so here is where we're gonna join. The edge of this is gonna go right along here and we're going to tack it this way. All right, so I'm gonna slip and score this I got my serrated edge and I'm going to support it with my hand while I'm getting that scored real well. And again, support it with my hand while we're slipping and scoring. All right. Now, if you think it's not slipped enough, you can use your brush to add just a little bit more moisture. But again, this clay is pretty wet, even though I've wedged it twice. All right, here we go. Tack it, hand underneath to support. You see, I'm kind of rolling my finger over, tacking it. All right, I'm pressing from the inside and pressing from the outside to get a good join. All right, now, if you can see on the inside, it needs some cleanup work. So I'm gonna use my yellow rib and I'm going to brace it and I'm doing this motion. Brace it from the outside, gently compress it and it smooths out that clay. I'm going to flip it over. Now this time it goes the other way. I'm going this way, all right? Brace it with your hand and smooth it over. Turn it around and use this curved edge. Make sure it's smooth. Okay. And again, there's my join right here. Okay. Now, if you want to smooth out some more on this outside edge, you've got to be careful because of the uh, texture on it but I'm going to use my little red rib and carefully smooth in places, all right? And I'm checking the bottom. Okay, flip it back over. Make sure it's all cleaned up, all right. All right, now those two pieces are together. Now this is this is the next thing. Once you put this piece on, you can flip it back over. This little knob thing is going to be on the inside. So we're going to put that on now and then we'll flip the whole thing over, clean up the lip before we put the handle on. And we'll do that now. Let's see. So I'm going to Slip and score this edge. Remember, this is the smaller edge. The wider edge is on the bottom. I'm going to slip and score this around here, getting ready to close this up. 
Now, if you have templates or a way that you make a mug or a cup, you can, you can do that. You could even throw a, a cup and make this. But you, know, you would have to put this part in it after it's made. I have done it, but uh, it's easier when it's hand-built to me. But uh, Now, I'm going to slip and score around this edge right here, just around the edge before I put it together. All right. See? All right, I'm ready to invert it over and close it up. Now, this is where a banding wheel would be handy because you could turn it. I'm going to turn mine, even though it's not on a banding wheel. And I'm kind of pressing this way so it gets a good join here. Now I'm going to use my little rib to smooth this out, make sure it's joined real well. Okay, now I'm going to flip this whole thing over now. I'm going to tap, tap, tap lightly, get it a good join. Go around it with my finger, being careful not to mess up my texture, but I want that smooth join, just like you would if you were making a mug. All right, now you see the inside. I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to dip it in the water, kind of tap it, tap it, and then I'm going to clean around the edges. I'm just doing round and round. To smooth this out. Make sure the join is is secure. All right. Okay, and that's what it looks like so far. Okay, all smooth inside. If you can get any light in there. So. All right. Now I want to make sure that this edge is smooth. Uh, if you need to use a rounder, you can do that. Be careful. My rounder is a little bit deep and you, you don't want to hit your little buckle thing on the inside. So you just want to make sure that everything is smooth. You don't want any sharp edges. Okay. okay. I'm gonna flip it over, kind of line up the outside edge where it's rounded and clean it up here, smooth it. Okay, rinse out my sponge sure my hands are clean. Sometimes you get dried, your clay gets on your hands and it dries out and then you have little specks on your piece. Now the next step is to put the loop handle on the top. Now, let me see if my rounder, let me grab my rounder. I have different ones. My favorite ones to use when I'm making mugs are these little terracotta pots. But, let me flip this back over and make sure. This is so deep that that won't work. But I have made rounders just out of clay and this will help. And I think I'm gonna leave it on it because I'm gonna be putting a little bit of pressure on it and I'm making sure that it is on here straight and it will stay round. All right, and I've got different sizes of these. Easy to make. You cut out a circle, five inch, four inch, uh, six inch, and you cut a slit, bring it around and join it and just bisfire it. These are just bisfired. Okay, now for my strap. I 
think I want to take this and use my little flower thing on it. I just like that idea. If I can get some kind of flower texture on it. Hmm. That worked. Okay, so I put a little, since this is flowers, I got a little flower texture on here. Now, I want this big enough to hook something on, but not too big. So that's a pretty good size loop. That'll give you enough room to put a rope or uh, some kind of twine on it. Okay, now that I've got my loop figured out, I'm going to cut the outside there. Okay, there's your loop. Okay. All right. So I am going to score in between these two because I want them joined together. So we'll score, kind of mash it together gently. You don't want to mash it till it thins the clay out. Then I'm going to score across here, adding a little slip as I'm doing it. Okay, I'm going to figure out where I want this right about there, making sure it is in the center. Okay, now lift it up and you can see it has left a mark of slip where you know where you're going to score this piece. Now I'm doing it gently because I'm not supporting the inside. I am gonna hold it from here. It does give a little bit of extra to it. All right, here we go. So just like a little wiggle, 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 wiggle. I think I'm gonna lift this off here. Use my potter's thumb. Or my fingers. Just give it a little bit of a support. Okay, now I'll put it back on my rounder. All right. Now I want to use my brush and clean it up. All right, and this is where I'm going to leave it until it gets leather, leather hard. If you try to cut holes in it now, as soft as it is, you're gonna have a horrible time doing it. So at this point, you would let it sit and get leather hard. You can see how much it shrinks just a little bit, not much. When it's leather hard, now I'll wrap this up. And actually, before I leave the shop this evening, mine will be ready. But some places you might have to wait till the next day. And I'm gonna come out here with a hole punch now I'm using a quarter of an inch punch and I'm going to put space out five holes around and just put your holes in it. Now you can actually do that while it's on the rounder and it will give it some support, but wait till it's leather hard to do that. Okay. Um, also after it's set, you'll want to cut your holes <clears throat> into your pieces. Now, the wind catcher is the bottom piece on a wind chime. You need one hole for it. Uh, I'm probably gonna do my butterfly sideways and uh, one hole is all it'll need. Then you have a piece that is your clapper that will join from the loop inside here to the wind, chime, to the, uh, wind catcher. And it's gonna need two holes. So you're gonna put one hole here and that why a uh, string is gonna attach to the loop. Inside it'll look like, here's your loop, tie a string to this one. Then you'll have another hole in the bottom which will attach it to this one. The wind catches this, knocks this into the side of your wind chime and uh, that's where you get your sound. All right, each one of these other butterflies that you have 
one hole. So you'll decide if you want them straight up and down or if you want them sideways. And you'll put one hole in each of those and they will hang from here. Each one, he'll be a hole, this one will hang. All right, the inside, you'll tie uh, twine from there to the top hole here. That has to be where it's height enough to clank when the wind blows. And then from the bottom of this one, the second hole goes this, all right? Now you can, instead of making a butterfly clapper inside, you can make a bead uh, or just anything that you want that's gonna be the height to, you want it to be able to swing and hit the side of the bell on the inside, okay? Anyway, that's all. That's all I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna get busy and build the rest of them. Uh, this one will set, like I said, till later where it's leather hard. I'll put all my little butterflies up here with it. They all dry out enough to be able to clean them up and handle them. Uh, don't forget to clean them up before they get completely bone dry. Easier at the leather stage. Right now they're too soft, but um, They'll be perfect at leather stage. So you'll come back and put your holes in and uh, bis fire them, glaze them, and fire them, and then put them together. Now I'll fi fire my butterflies. I want them glazed both sides. So I will hang them on a rod, on a bead rack, uh, or you can put them on steel. So I have uh, what they call a bed of nails. I'll show you. This is what they call a bed of nails, and you can just glaze them on both sides, lay them out on here as long as they're not touching each other, you're good. Uh, fire them. When you pull them out, you just take your Kemper stone and sand down at any point that, that may have left behind, uh, and they're glazed both sides. I'd rather glazed on both sides if they're gonna be outside in the weather. They will last longer. So, well, I guess they'll last longer. All of mine are lasting, so whatever. All right. Well, this is where I'm going to leave you today. Be watching for more pictures of different things coming in, in the mud shop. And sorry it's so long a video, but uh, I thank you for joining me. And until next time, bye.